G'day. Welcome to the Fearless Singer podcast. I am so excited. I have uh, a dear colleague uh, with me, Alpha Schulte, and she is the founder of Money Made Simple, and she helps women go from overwhelm to empowerment. She was a tax accountant, and then she, yeah, started to see no, I I have a, a bigger mission and service here to help women succeed. And the reason why she's here is she's here to empower us fearless singers who may experience, you know, in our 3D reality, we experience this kind of undervaluing of what we do and it, it does affect our self-esteem and it does reinforce that idea of, you know, the starving artist. But Elf is here to say we, we don't have to buy into that and there is, there are mindset uh, tools that we have access to. However, there are also very practical tools. Uh, and that's what I love about you, Alpha, is that you've managed to merge, you know, the spiritual and the mindset work, but with the, the practicalities of money management. So welcome. Thank you so much for being here and, and speaking with the Fearless Singer community. I'm so excited to have you. Oh, thank you, Mel. And yeah, I'm very, very happy to be here. When when I first met you, I don't know, there was this, I feel like I'd known you for, for so long. I don't know. I, just, I feel like I can't too. explain it. Yeah. I was like, did I go to school with Elfa? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no. is your name? I didn't recognize, but I don't know. There's just, maybe it's just an energetic. Yeah. Um, it could be also the European thing as well. It could be. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So yeah, take us, take us back. Um, oh gosh, my setup is wobbling at the moment I keep knocking my keyboard so apologies if you currently feel like you're on the Titanic uh <laughs> so take us back to being a tax accountant when when was that sort of pivotal pivotal moment for you when you realize actually you know I, I want to be doing more uh well because I fell into the tax accounting um it's like it's not really something you kind of go as a as a teenager oh that's what I want to aspire to be um but I I grew up with you know I'm first generation so my my family came from from Europe sort of post-war and had that very sort of scarcity um paranoid kind of mentality like you must go to university you must get a good job and I really didn't know what else I wanted to do. So I just sort of went down that path and I kind of fell into, you know, accounting and, and tax specifically as a, as a graduate. Um, and then I, I realized I really didn't enjoy the work. I enjoyed the people and the consulting world allows you to, to really kind of deal with people. And that part I, I liked. And then I started to, to move into to other roles and I, I did it. I, I literally got to the point where I was sort of in my, my late twenties and I was just, fed up with not being happy <laughs> and um and I but I still didn't really know what I wanted to do so I ended up um taking a risk and joining a a small consulting company that um a friend of a friend was working for and they needed a technical writer and I'd done some writing study because I love writing and, and it's funny when I, I learned my values all of this start this starts to make sense but and so the personal development journey that kind of happened and then the financial side I I got a financial planner because it's like, well, you know, I'm you know hitting 30. I need to do something with my money. And, um, yeah, so that sent me down that path. And I've always been really, like, a curious person. Like, I, if I don't know something, I want to find out how to do it. Um, and that's where I was like, well, there's something wrong with the way the financial planning process went and the answers and the lack of visibility and the lack of control that I had over my own finances. And I was paying, like, three different layers of fees so that's when I started studying it and adapt, like adjusting my own world. And I'd taken, I, I took all of my finances off the financial planner and managed myself. Then I had friends asking me what I was doing. And I realized there's all this education that just doesn't happen. And you don't even realize you're not learning it because we're getting stuffed full of so many things when we're a child um, that you don't even know what you're not learning. Cause you're like, how could I possibly fit any more in this brain? Um, but then you realize there's so much more to life. And if you can learn the things that you're, passionate about which is why I really admire like I I played piano um growing up and I taught myself saxophone I played in a jazz band for a while and oh, I, wow. I don't know I didn't know that about you yeah so I, I love music um and I love the theater so it was when when the whole COVID thing happened I was like devastated for the industry because I I know there is that you know you do need you need an audience and if you're prevented from having one it just it it's a bit more tricky 
But then I, I started seeing sort of different musicians online and they would, I've seen orchestras perform online and it still sounds amazing. Um, so, but anyway, so I'm getting a little bit off track here, but yeah, so that's, no. that's sort of how I ended up doing what I'm doing is just a general desire to, to share information. I think that's probably why we've attracted is because you have that, that musicality, you know, that music within you, but also too, you're very creative and I love that aspect of of you too because the stereotype with you know the the person in finance or you know tax or the the you know the left brain dominant uh individual is you know that they don't have that that creativity which i think is a load of bullshit because obviously we have access to both lobes of our brain yes. but i love that you wear you wear your creativity with all your beautiful jewelry <laughs> that's fantastic so Coming back to, because you mentioned that values play a big part in how you manage your own finances and you're starting to then merge the -hmm. personal development work with with financial literacy, which a lot of financial professionals don't tend to do. It's very sort of masculine, here here are the facts, but don't actually take into account the, the various personality types and tendencies. And so when did you discover, oh gosh, there, there's a real gap here and, you know, I can really help people with this? Yeah, I think I, I noticed it when I could see the resistance that people had when we were we were going through some of their things. And I, I literally, it's it really started when I had my daughter, I was um, a contractor, so I knew I wasn't going to get maternity leave and I didn't know how long it would be until I'd work again. And so I really doubled down on becoming a lot more conscious of, of spending and what, what was going on in and out of the finances. And so then I started helping other friends who were going to become mums with their sides of things as well. And I could I could st- seeing that there were these walls we were sort of hitting. And I'd gone down on my, I, I was, and we still am on my own personal development journey. And I thought the whole idea of we we know consciously and like cerebrally what we should do but the thing that holds us back is not logical there's an emotional aspect to it and so when you actually go to somebody and say well what do you want to do you know they, he, or here's what you need to do here are the buckets that you need to put your money in you need to do that you need to do blah 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 and they're like well a why do i need to do it and secondly what how is like i it, there's there's just a disconnect that happens because we're very emotionally driven beings as humans um, and if we don't understand what our values are, and my my primary value is creativity, interestingly enough, <laughs> and then I also have discernment and control as them as well, and that plays out in different ways. But the creativity is always the overarching one that kind of define it dictates everything I do. And if I can't be creative, I literally feel like I'm suffocating. Yeah. So I have to... So oh, my apologies for no 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 go for it. But you can see that in everything that you create and do. So if you go onto Alpha's website, so it's moneymadesimple.com.au. Uh, oh, you, it's actually money dash made. Simple. Oh, sorry, money oh, yeah. dash made simple. I'll, I'll also I'll put a little pop up here on the screen as well. Uh, it's just it's like this beautiful, colourful oasis. So I always think that you know your website is an extension of you, and you know. Yeah, well, the business books will tell you, oh, it's too colourful, oh, everything's pastels. And I was like, but I'm not pastel. I don't like pastels. No. <laughs> I, I wear bright colours. I don't always walk around with big earrings like this, but I, I, I saw them and I just couldn't resist. Oh, they're beautiful. So, mm. um, but, yeah, so it's it's very much figuring out who you are. And as, as an artist as well, um, and especially as a singer, you have to find your voice. You don't want to emulate somebody else. Sometimes you might want to, but at other times you want to be able to have your voice. And everyone's life is unique to them and the the desires that they have are unique to them. But there's a lot of external influence that comes up, oh, you should be doing this at this age or you should want this or you should want. I was like, well, enough with the shoulds. And we've had, we have so much that comes on us. Like I, I had my last car for 20, 20 years and it was a 22-year-old car. I used to get teased a lot. My dad got in, was embarrassed to come in my car because I had no hubcaps, the paint was peeling, and it was, but I was, it mechanically was fine. Eventually did die and I bought a, another secondhand car. But it was one of those things where I was like, I don't really care. Like it's it's a car. Yeah, yeah I do, yes, I do like nice cars, but it's going to get me from A to B. There's other things that are more important to me, like travel. So I'd much prefer to spend my money there. But it's doing this consciously without having like concerns that, you're going to be disappointing somebody. Ultimately, you don't want to disappoint yourself. 
Absolutely. So, so understanding how that plays out. And do you find that working with women in particular, it, it, it's, I mean, we can't compare, we don't know the experience of, you know, living through a man's experience, but do you find that there is even way more unpacking to do with that? Yeah, well, and this is, to be honest, when I started, I was like, everyone needs to know this. This is so important. But whenever I would talk to to male friends or even my friend's husbands, they would just ask me about investing and specifically crypto. And I was like, uh, that, no, that's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about like fundamentals, you know, before you even get to the investing, how everything else is set up. And, you know, you, do you understand your superannuation and, you know, what what your needs are financially and what kind of lifestyle do you want? What do you value? What are your beliefs around money? Because if you don't get them sorted, you're just going to have the same patterning repeat itself. It's just like relationships. You just keep attracting the same bad guy. That's it. I remember you saying, uh, so we're, we're uh, Alpha and I are part of a business community and you're, you're speaking with one of, you know, our colleagues who was saying, you know, this is, this is what I want. I want, um, you know, $300,000 and, and you said, that's great. That's great. But you asked her to reflect on, so why is it that you, you want that? Like, you know, what is the purpose of that? Oh, to give me this, this, and this. And your philosophy was, well, if we can start actually really connecting to those values now, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to find that once we get to that amount, it won't feel like there's more, you know, there's more to spend on kind of thing. Um, yeah. I don't think I eloquently articulated that you said it way more impactfully and powerfully <laughs> but yeah just take us through that you know we we say that you know we want to have these million dollar you know musical businesses but we know a lot of women in particular that reach those milestones and still feel like they don't have this the freedom that they were craving and the reason why they you know began their businesses in you know the first place and yeah. maybe are spending way more money than what they've ever done before as well. So effectively, even though they've reached these financial milestones, they're not really uh, living the experience that they they wanted in the first place. Yeah. And that's because a lot of the time we live our lives just somewhat unconsciously. So we just we just kind of head down a path. And if we even stop to reflect, we're like, oh, how did I even get here? Is this where I wanted to go? Where do I want to go? And as soon as you start asking yourself those questions, it's sometimes a bit confronting, which is, which is why... If I'm going to be really a stereotypical, it often tends to be women who are a little more courageous in this space than, than men are. Um, they're very much focused on the metrics and, and the steps and the goals and all of that. And then when they get somewhere, then the level of unfulfillment kind of kicks in, but they just keep powering through it. Um, but generally speaking, um, a woman will start to, to kind of go, okay, well, if I'm here and I'm unhappy, why is that? And there is so much unhappiness, there's so much depression, there's so much anxiety. And I look around, I was going, we really should, like the kind of opportunities and the kind of world that we live in. I mean, I've been to third world countries. My family comes from a second world country and I've seen the way they live. And a lot of them are happy. They don't have all the stuff we have. They also don't have all the problems we have because, you know, there's, like you say, the more money you make, there's, there's different problems that rock up. You know, there's more responsibility or more expenses or more management and all of that. Um, but it's understanding consciously what sort of lifestyle do you want? Why do you want it? And also recognizing that your goals have to keep moving and progressing with you. If they stay stagnant and then you reach it, you'll get there and you'll be like, huh, this didn't feel like I thought it would feel. So what do I do now? I've seen that happen so many times. So it's it's very much being conscious, being in the moment, being creative, being adaptable and recognizing that you change, which means that your goals, desires, and lifestyle will change as you grow and being comfortable with the fact that things will change. Can I give you a scenario? By the way, I just want to validate, validate that that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Uh, can I give you a scenario? So mm -hmm. I'm a singer mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I, you know, we know that there, we're living in a uh, housing crisis at the moment and, you know, inflation is seems to be out of control yeah. uh so you know i'm paying a, a big rent uh hang on am i describing myself right now no hang on <laughs> um you know i've got i've got i've signed up to a couple of agencies you know i get book gigs um, for gigs here and there um but i'm finding that gigs are getting cancelled you know last minute there's no um you know there's no guarantee that i'm always going to reach a certain you know income level so it makes it really tricky 
to get a plan in place when you feel like, mm. well, I'm just kind of haphazardly grabbing bits and pieces from here and, and there. Yeah. What would you say to that singer who does have, you know, a real desire to create something in terms of, you know, that financial stability for one yeah. uh, and also even even get on the housing market? You know, that's a that's a real issue at the moment, you know, who yeah. would like a little property, even if it's just a, a unit somewhere uh, here in Brisbane or wherever you're living. So how would you uh, take that singer through uh, your process? So it, I always start with income uh, because without that, it's very difficult to do anything else. So we'd sort of look at the style, like what sorts of income they're currently experiencing. Is there a way to have something more stable? Uh, and it might mean getting sort of maybe just a part-time job while you're building things. And in terms of housing, it might be necessary to try and find a, a group, like maybe two or one or two, depending on, on how much of a household you'd like to live in, other people to flat with just while you're building. So it depends what stage of life that you're in, because obviously when you're younger, you have a bit more tolerance for that. As you get older, probably slightly less so. Um, but it's trying, to, it is trying to build a little bit of stability in that if you can go, <clears throat> excuse me, direct, sorry, <clears throat> excuse me to a particular place where you can maybe try and instead of going through an agent, I get in the beginning, you probably need that foot in the door. Um, but if there's a way to get a, a regular booking um, or maybe going to an event company and then looking at being like a, a singer um, or, a, or a performer in a band for weddings or corporate events, um, even charitable events, uh, just some way to, to build that income up. And it it's, it's, yeah, the way the current climate is in that space, I don't know because everything post-COVID seems to have changed and there is a lot more of that cancellation. Um, in terms of the spending side then, I would definitely look at ways to be as frugal as possible and definitely living with other people is one way to share the cost of the living and and being able to do that collectively. You've got income pool to be able to then go to a, a landlord and say, look, you know, there's three of us, here's our income, we'll be, you know, pulling the, the our income to pay the rent. And in terms of then the budgeting, I tend to work on buckets. So rather than trying to to look at every single line item, we then go, okay, well, let's here, here's where your here's overall where your income is. Your expenses are roughly this much a month, and even if you can just say five dollars a month, it's better than nothing, and it helps with the the momentum of seeing money grow. Mm. The other aspect, to be honest, before all of that is where all the values and beliefs start to come in. So while we, we we look at the income at the start, it's also then looking at patterns of things that are happening. So if you're getting a lot of cancellations, um, and I know this is going to sound really woo-woo, but it often has a tendency to be the energy that that you bring. So yeah. if you're if you're half in in the music industry and half out, that energy will be there. Or if you aren't comfortable being on stage, that hesitation energy will be there as well. And if that's played out in other parts of your life where people just cancel on you all the time, either just get used to it and move on or look at why and what energetically are you just generally holding yourself back and the beliefs that you have are actually negatively impacting you, if that makes sense. So it's it, it's not a tangible thing, but it quite often when you start to look at your values and your beliefs, you see patterns. Yeah. And it's... It, it's a, it's a hard one to say because then you're like and they're like but I don't want to bring this on myself it's like well we do <laughs> um, so um Alpha this is a a woo uh, safe space because I talk about stuff I talk about this stuff all the time I talk about um that I'm on a journey of shadow integration work mm -hmm. because the last and this was the last episode because yeah. on some level we kind of get off on the cancellations we love it because maybe deep down inside you just want to be on the couch watching Netflix with your cat. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. You're putting yourself out there to be critiqued when you're on stage. Oh, that's and it. That's hard. Yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of resistance around it. Even if you're the most amazing singer and you've been doing it for a while, you'll always find a new layer of of resistance. You know, yeah. for me, I, I convince myself, particularly in the hotter months, that oh, you know, it's not. I love performing, but you know, it's it's really. It's really hot and it feels, you know, yuck. And I don't want to be out driving in this and setting up and all the rest of it. So there, there's a little bit of that. But then when I really looked at it, I was like, you know, there's there's actually some 
body issues there you know that, that like rocking up to an event and feeling like your makeup's all askew and you know because of the sweat and you know people are judging mm. you on your appearance and you know maybe um because of whatever conditions are happening you know you don't feel co confident with your voice you know um yeah. so yeah I'm starting to go underneath and 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 checking in with that because I just want to add to what you said I find that when I create um, different products that I go, yeah, no, these seem like a really good idea, mm. but I don't a hundred percent want to carry them out. There is, you know, I, no one, no one will, will get them. Even yeah. free stuff that I put out there. No one, if I go, Oh, this is a little bit, you know, wishy washy. Yeah. And no one, no one will, if, if you're not a hundred percent, you know, bought into your own, whatever yeah. it is that you do, yeah. you can't, no one is like maybe a couple, but you won't be, it won't, yeah, the it won't, same. Yeah. yeah. That, that holding back energy. And, yeah. and I think in the beginning where, um, for, from a performer's point of view, I think we've kind of, we're scared to put ourselves out there and we're also still trying to find our voice. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very much like, uh, when you're in your twenties, you're still trying to figure out who you are. And being like going into business, because even being a performer, you, you're, you're in your own, like you have to sell yourself. You have to sell your skills, your services, mm. your your music. Um, and it's really difficult to, to figure out who you are while doing that as well. But you figure yourself out while doing that. So it's this whole like chicken egg thing. Um, and mm. I, if you, yeah, and if you hold any of yourself back, that comes across. And I've noticed this in business as well. In the beginning, I was just like, oh, well, what do I give? Like, I think I was giving probably too much and it was overwhelming people in the beginning because I can be really passionate about this. And I'd be like, blah, 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 blah. And I think all the people, there's a bluey episode I was watching with my daughter last night. And it was literally like, blah, 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 word, blah, 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 word. And I, th I think that's how I came across in the beginning. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want to hold things back either. So it's it's really trying to, to figure out that that balance. So when you're putting something out there for people to not get overwhelmed, but also for it to hit in the right way so that they actually get it and have a light bulb moment because that's ultimately what you want. You want people to succeed. You want them to grow. You want them to then, they can then pay it, for, pay it forward and spread the word, even just by being that way. You, I see that like with my daughter and how to how to demonstrate the way to be so that she can learn it from me. I don't always get it right, but yeah. I've had some technical issues in the last couple of days and I haven't exactly been, you know, a ray of sunshine. Um, but uh, it's, that's, we're that's human. demonstrating that, you know, humanness. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to add to that too. Just, um, the, the, that aspect of still finding your voice isn't just, you know, when you're in, in your youth, like you'll get to 30 and still be yeah. finding your voice. You'll get to 40 and still be finding True. your voice. And, and really the journey is so beautiful if you allow it to be, I'm yeah. still finding aspects of my voice, you know, uh, as I go on this path and i think though as women and particularly australian women because we we do we are unraveling undoing some conditioning around mm -hmm. you know tall poppy syndrome i'm <laughs> americans think whenever i say that they think i'm saying tall puppy <laughs> so really they don't get it they don't get world. it at all tall yeah. poppy no they don't yeah they don't so understand we, it. we run we're really unraveling that within ourselves because there is that as as singers and performers creatives we do we are our product and we mm. do need to be 100 percent invested in ourselves and really yeah. believe in ourselves and so that we're not holding back but then there is that fear of oh no that they'll think i've got tickets on myself you know so mm. it is it's this constant juggling act you know between what is true which is mm. that we are so loved you know yes. by our higher self or universe or god however you perceive it yeah. uh, we are these little twinkling stars in a big sea of stars mm -hmm. and yeah just really believing in that and 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 finding new ways to love ourselves even when we're having those technical difficulties and Alpha, i can totally identify with you because <laughs> most of my um you know my uh fearless singer membership uh, they, I, I go on and tell them everything about what's happening. There's been yeah. times where I felt like hurling myself over the veranda. It's like, oh, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> too much. Too, too much. much. But, the, you know, the Greek, the Greek uh, drama queen. <laughs> yeah. Full, full flight. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So I think what you're saying is really it doesn't matter, you know, where you're at financially. There are ways to be resourceful. Yeah. And if we are doing that inner work, 
mm-hmm. you know, and uncovering some of that resistance around, you know, who we are, what we do, and also connecting to values. Yeah. We are way more attuned to to see the opportunities to one be resourceful resourceful but two to even create you know so and and uh, the reason why you're here as well is because you've just created such a beautiful you know uh group of of products to help women and you've done that because one you are very good you're such a gun with the knowledge that you've acquired, but you're very good with people and, and getting the best out of people. But mostly you're a creative. Yeah. You're and you know, and as creatives, which by the way, I believe everyone is a creative, yeah. uh, you know, really there is a there's an opportunity to think of something that you think may help other people, finding a need for other people. And you can create a product. So, and yeah. if you are a singer, it doesn't have to look like teaching either. Uh, um, as Alpha said in the beginning, Alpha uh, loves music, and you are during COVID, you're accessing, you know, mm-hmm. concerts online. So there's, you know, that you can grow a community around your actual music and and have your community support you through Patreon or your own version yeah. of that. So PayPal Me or yeah. yeah. So even you even YouTube, that? like it's it's yeah. really interesting when you see like um um I follow Hauser the cellist. Oh, beautiful! And then, and then you yeah, yeah, and then with Carolyn, I can remember her last name, the, the violinist as well. And you you see that, and they they build profiles mm. on online, and it's it is about sharing and getting out out there. And not everyone, and this this is the other thing too, not everyone's going to love you, and that's okay. Um, and this is where the beauty of when you grow older, like you, you know, tend to be a little bit self conscious when you're younger, and and that is the the thing that to embrace with age is the I am who I am, I'm coming from a good place, I'm you know, bringing my heart to this, and if you don't like it, okay, all right, would I like you to? Yeah, okay, but there'll be others who do and they, who can really connect to it. Mm. Um, I remember Andre Rieu was always quite a quite a divisive. Like my <laughs> my grandmother was classical, you know, she was always very much Haydn and Wagner, and you know, she was Austrian, so very, you know, very much you know, it has to be the proper classics. And I had a colleague who absolutely loved Andre Rieu, and my mother, my grandmother was like, oh no, he's not. He's just a he's just an entertainer. And I was like, what's so wrong with that? Like that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. He's bringing ball gowns to Strauss, you know, like that's fantastic. That's he, uh, he is a master entrepreneur. He's created a real, out, like otherworldly experience. Yeah. You know, well, his audiences. Yeah. Like JK Rowling brought reading back to, you know, the love of reading back to a lot of people who hadn't either hadn't discovered it or had forgotten it. And I feel like Andre sort of did that as well to a certain extent. And other everyone has that capacity in them and it just takes a a little bit of courage and confidence and self-belief to do that. And this is where the beliefs come in and understanding your values and what you stand for and the things that you're willing to do, because sometimes it does take some sacrifice in the beginning. But if you have a real goal and you have your why, it makes it a lot easier to stick to the things you're going to do um, with the fact that you also still have to be adaptable <laughs> because things will change as well. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Yeah. So working on those beliefs, values to then start to see opportunities of where you can grow a community yeah. with your music yeah. and um, and create something of value so that your community will support you. And because yeah. we know now that, you know, we like CDs are a bit of a dying art. Maybe they'll come back one day, you know, like uh, records. I still have CDs. Yeah. So do I. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, so then that might be like spending a little bit of extra and in- investing in getting some vinyl made and getting a beautiful artwork, you know, for, for that mm. as well. And um, my best mate who is a musician designs it. T-shirts. Yeah, you know, they're beautiful. And, oh, they're so cool. And so that's yeah. another income stream. So you can, uh, it, she's a musician primarily, but she's also an amazing artist. But, yeah, mm. you could be designing uh, websites for other musicians or even other creative entrepreneurs. I just designed mm. a website for one of my dear friends who is a singer. So yeah. there's different there's different opportunities. It's a yeah. matter of really starting to expand and we can only do that through uncovering those beliefs so yes. that we can start to, to see them. Yeah. On another topic, and I know, I, don't, I know we could talk for like hours and hours and hours and hours, but... <laughs> Can you talk on the fact that 
you really don't need a lot of money to get started in one money management and mm -hmm. two investing. Yeah, so it's it's so much more accessible now than it ever used to be. Um, and the, the I'll start with the money management first. Is you have what you have, and you can do like if you if you think about like well, if I think back to the income I started on versus the income I have now. I mean, you have to time adjust it, but you know, strictly speaking, how you live. And I'm going, oh my gosh, I managed to survive on that. And I was still having fun. Like I would even, even to the point where I would eat before I went out because I didn't want to miss out on catching up with my friends. So when I went out, I might just order an entree or um, a drink. And I didn't feel like I was being deprived at all. Um, it's just, it's then how you frame it. It's like I'm spending time with my friends. That is more important than whether or not I can afford to buy entree, main, dessert, and, you know, a couple of cocktails or whatever. I'm, I'm more of a water drinker. I've always got a glass of water near me. So that's just how I am anyway. Um, but it's understanding then what's actually important to you and then making your money fit to that rather than just try, you trying to fit inside whatever is supposed to be appropriate for, for that. And there's so many different ways to, to live life and experience life without having to spend a whole lot of money. So I think it's trying to, to take the fact that you need to spend money in order to be happy or to have a good life. And be be creative and how you can do things differently, but not see it because, oh, I can't afford it. The languaging with that becomes, so with money management, I find the languaging is extremely important. If you come from a perspective of I can't afford it, then there's a lack there rather than I am choosing to afford that instead of that because I like that better. It just has a different energetic feel and you're not coming from, I don't have enough for that. I mean, I even have to teach my daughter this. She's nearly eight. And, you know, we went to Vanahiri on Saturday and there's all these rides and they're quite expensive. And I said to her, I said, you can have three. And after she had her, her third, she's like, oh, I want another one. I was like, I told you you could have three. I mean, I could have ordered another one, but I didn't want to. I wanted her to experience mm. the fact that you value what you have mm. rather than lamenting the thing that you don't have. Mm. so it's it's the perspective that you have so that's that's the money management side the investing side there are micromanaging uh, sorry micro investing apps around now which is so easy to access and you can you can dabble with those like i i have an app which literally rounds up my my um my every time i spend something i connect my credit card and my my bank account to it i spend something it rounds it up it holds on to that until it's got to, I think it's at $10. And then it pools uh, the money with other investors and invests on my behalf. I started, I've literally, I started it five years ago and it's got $5,600 in there now. Mm -hmm. And that's literally just cents. Yeah. If you're actually investing dollars and you can start to play, there's ethical investing and options in there as well. And there are a number of different platforms now. When it first came out, there was one and there's still more or less one that does roundups, but there are others out there. Then even it's superannuation. I I really and I, I realize for for um for artists it's probably something you don't want to really think about, but it's really important. Oh gosh, I um I don't want to lament on the negative, but I've seen way too many ABC documentaries about women that get out of ousted out of a relationship and screwed over by you know their husband that they've been with for so many years. Yeah, and they've got nothing. They don't have the super, you know, and also there's yeah no also technology literacy as well you know to crack into the workforce again yeah so yeah super is uh is yeah so, important and, and like i'm i'm lucky because i had a career in you know in the government um for many years and also as a teacher high school teacher so there's still some left over but i tell you what i got a notification saying if you don't keep paying yourself super you're going to lose your insurance by December. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, ah, okay, got to Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's and and to be honest, the the biggest thing about money, and that this it's so and this is why I, I called my business Money Made Simple, even though that's it's quite a common name out there. But at the time I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, this is such a great name. Anyway, not that uncommon. Um, it's consistency. And yeah, you know, it's literally it's not sexy, it's not exciting. You can't sell it to anyone because mm -hmm. it literally is you just even if it's just five dollars a week, you just keep doing that. There's um a gentleman I, I read a uh, he was he was a, he was a janitor in a high school he'd been a janitor his entire life but he consistently saved from the age of like 25 he was a millionaire by the time he retired literally just by consistently putting small amounts of money into the share market and it's not about picking stocks either this is the other other misnomer people think oh investing I've got to I've got to know how to you know buy and sell that's trading trading and investing are actually two different things. Um, 
people can trade. I actually started to learn about share trading and candlestick charts and all, and all of that. And I was just like, oh my goodness. My cousin was a day trader. He was constantly stressed and he was up at all hours of the night being open for whichever markets and Forex trading and all of that. And I was just like, yeah. that's just, that just, that, no, no, not, not for me. No. So I, I invest in, and these days as well, I'm investing in index funds and I just like buy regularly, buy and hold, buy and hold. Mm. And mm. it sits there. So it's 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 getting into that that level of consistency and whatever percentage of your income that you can put in there, just it's non-negotiable. You have to make that commitment and be disciplined and go, this is just going in there. That's it. I, I'm not changing that. Um, and that's that's really that's that money management and investing is just that's it. It's consistency it. and discipline. But let's make it sexy. Let's make it sexy let's... for five seconds because yeah, consistency is the key word, but the spiritual reframe around that is the power of momentum. Yes. So making those just those tiny little incremental, you know, investments. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the uh, law of incremental upgrades. So like just every now and then just do tiny little upgrades, like for instance, and gosh, this is TMI, but, you know, maybe it's time to throw out those holy underwear. And, you know, even if you go to Kmart and get like, you know, the, the nice bamboo type, yes. you know, just making those yeah. little upgrades, also those tiny investments over time it does create momentum and you yeah. will start to find that oh my god i've got ten thousand dollars where did that come from yeah and it's better yeah. to start now than wish you had 10 years later yeah but momentum such a better way because you know the my technical brain goes compounding but momentum sounds much better than compounding <laughs> It's just, it's just, it's marketing, <laughs> <laughs> but also too, there's spiritual truth in that as well. But yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's merging those two words, uh, worlds. Yeah. yeah. They're compound and it's not just momentum doesn't have to just be what you see physically, but it's mm -hmm. also the feeling that you have inside of you of expansion, yeah. which yes. it, it opens you to way more opportunities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with the, when you said the, the upgrades, one of the things I always suggest to my clients is to have a fun fund. You don't have, you can call it whatever you want. Mine's actually called the travel and photography fund. Um, and I just put sort of little bits amounts in there regularly so that when you do want to go have a bit of a splurge or a bit of an upgrade or a bit of fun, you've got the money sitting there to do it. Um, so you don't sort of have to feel guilty because that's the other thing a lot. It's a really destructive emotion, guilt. Um, it's yeah. So if we can try and minimize the, that, that feeling through just being a little bit prepared, um, it just makes it so much easier. And then you start to feel, oh, wow, I'm doing this. I'm in control. This is where the empowerment kicks in. You're like, wow, I've created this. I've managed to bring myself from there to here, which means if I've done that, I can do more. So you then that momentum builds and that confidence builds at the same time. And then mm -hmm. off you go, you know. That doesn't mean you won't have little setbacks because we all do, but that's human. It's part of this yeah. life experience, yeah. That's right. And mm -hmm. um, we just then have to have the the mental tools to then go, okay, get back on track. Don't just, it's, it's a little bit like, oh, I've, I've blown, I've eaten something bad today, so I've blown my diet for the entire week. I may as well just let go. You're like, no, 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 you just had one setback briefly for a day. Then you can just keep going back on, get back on track again. Hmm. Same thing you goes just, with the you finances. Just, you, yeah, you just create uh, what is your default. Yes. You know, your default behaviors and, you know, get that into balance. And then every now and then, you know, things will happen, but you always snap back into that, you know, um, a lot of uh, thought leaders are calling it your thermostat, you know, yeah. finding where your thermostat is. Yes. Now, most importantly, by the way, I'm so signing up to work with you. <laughs> this has been <laughs> the best session. I love you so much. Oh, I just, I yeah. And I love also too, like, even though it is a, an investment working with you, it's not it's not inexpensive by any means, but I feel like it's also accessible. Mm -hmm. um, you've created it accessible. For, um, have you done that on purpose? Yes. Yeah. yeah I, I didn't want it to be because, because to be honest, a lot of financial planning is out of people's reach financially. So mm -hmm. I thought, well, I, I don't want to just be another person like that where it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so, but at the same time, I still wanted it to be valuable. Yeah. Enough oh, for people to really go, okay, well, I'm investing in this. So I'm really going to take it seriously. I'm going mm -hmm. to commit to it. And yeah. I'm going to make that commitment more to myself than anything mm. else. And that's so powerful. I know that in myself that, you know, so um, I pay $600 a month to Tina Tower to be in her empire builders, but 
holy moly, I show up to every yes. single live, even if I am still in my pajamas, <laughs> I put myself, I take my screen off because nobody needs to see that, me on a Tuesday morning or a Thursday morning. Um, but it's amazing what that does. And, it, you know, paying a little bit extra for Kajabi, you know, mm -hmm. um, to, yeah. to, to, to have everything working at such a high, you know, uh, high functionality yeah uh you know so th it's amazing what it does to you yes it really does like opportunities do come like yeah. financial opportunities because you're making these investments in yourself yeah. um not only financial but it's time and it's also you know you're you're consuming um not only this content but you're implementing it and all yeah. the rest of it so yeah i would feel um giving you that you know that monthly uh rate that you charge i i would feel like no i'm going to show up i'm going to i'm going to make the most of this and mm. and set up some really strong uh, you know infrastructure for my future because th that would be the the goal of the that coaching container that you offer yeah so i have i have an online course which i used to offer as a program but i've because i've i've been getting more um sort of questions about private coaching um but i've also just launched a membership so i do i have tiers i suppose so where you know i have some lower lower end products um which people can access and they can run on their own but i found it, it is a bit tricky to do on your own which is why the membership is there cuz what I, what actually triggered the concept of it is i um, i go see a healer and there would always be a like, oh, you know, I've got all these things I want to talk to her about and, and I'll have my session. And then literally like a week or two later, something will blow up. And I was like, I could do a session right now, but I had my session two weeks ago. I don't have another one for six months. So I thought it never seems to happen when you need it. So if you have a regularity, like, you know, we have mm. with Tina, yeah, then you can, you can check in and you can ask questions and you can, you can get the things that you need when you need it, not having to like wait for whatever session somewhere. Um, so that's, that's, and then fast tracking the whole thing and making it a lot more personalized is where the private coaching comes in. So I've, I've sort of tried to, to cover off in different scenarios. Oh, that's brilliant. So how, how can people reach you? I know I, I mentioned your website at the beginning, but let's, let's mention it again. So yes, my, my website is money-madesimple.com.au and I'm on social. So on Instagram, it's alpha money made simple. And on Facebook, it's MMS money made simple. Um, and yeah, so you can message me on any of those platforms. My email, I'm, I'm having technical issues, so I'm not going to say my email at the moment. It's not working right now. That's okay. They can, they can go on your website and you've got a form, a contact. I've got a contact us yeah, page on there yeah. as well. Yes. Uh, also you have a, like a load of beautiful free products as well. So, you know, you could get started. There's a, a guide that you can download and it was uh, five, um, you know, money management tips there. Yeah. So I basically well. took my online yeah. program and condensed it into a 20 minute video. So if you want to get a taste for all the very, I've, I've packed it full of ideas and it's literally a summary of all the things that that I, I teach in, in the paid program. Mm. So you can get that for free. Mm. And then I have a limiting beliefs, um, Kickstarter, or kick kick them out of your life checklist and then some on micro investing so you can you can absorb all of that um and if that you you can definitely roll with that but if you'd like more personalized help obviously that's when the the coaching yeah. and stuff yeah. yeah oh fantastic i feel really inspired oh good and galvanized I'm like yeah <laughs> money yeah uh, yeah really want it's it's an, it's an energy and it's a yeah. tool and yeah. we we place too much of our self worth on it it's it's just Oh, uh, that's been my biggest lesson is, yeah, separating myself from dollar value because there was a couple of weeks back where I was negative $16 and in the past I was like, this is a real testament to how much work I've done because in the past that would be enough to go, oh, my God, you're a fucking no. loser and, you know, really <laughs> be super ridiculously hard on myself. But now I'm just like, oh. <laughs> It's all right, it'll turn around again. It's not even a nervous laugh. But the thing is, yeah, when you sort of start, see, I, I – believe in the principle of there's a quantum energetic field if i focus on this right now then i'm going to limit myself to you know what is there which is yeah. abundance and if i but if i connect more into this and then be really grateful for what i have i look around and i go oh my god i'm liberace i have three pianos i've got the world's most beautiful cat and then mm -hmm. i start to really you know i mean those are superficial things i've also got a beautiful family friend and friends and community so yeah. it's like when you really connect to those things and you start to feel the joy it's like oh 
somebody signed up for a pack of 10 sessions or, you know, or, yeah. um, oh my God, my brother sold property and put a thousand dollars into my bank account, you know? So yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing how quickly those 3d, it, the 3d evidence just turns around. Mm. Yeah. And like you said, it's that focusing on what you do have rather than what you don't, because that, e either way it builds. Yeah. So yeah. it'll build either what you don't have will build or what you do have will build. Just yeah. which one do you prefer to focus on? Yeah. And my whole mantra is create, create, mm. create, create. Um, so that's yeah. my top value too, if I really connect um, yes. to that. Yeah. It's uh, creation, community, connection. The three yeah. C's. Ah. Yeah. Hopefully get alliteration as well. I know. <laughs> oh, Alpha, you are honestly, you're such a, an incredible beacon of grace, knowledge, empowerment. And I just want to thank you so much for for sharing your wisdom with the Fearless Singer community. And uh, lots of love to you. Thank you. Right back yeah. at you, Mel. Thanks. Yes. Thanks, mate.